Good Packer Nation morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. I'm on on a Tuesday. Back to the daily grind. And it's not a grind at all because we're talking about the Packers. Happy League New Year, everybody. It's the new year for the league. Legal tampering time. It begins at 12 o'clock Eastern today. And uh, things are going to start rolling really fast. So let's do some Packer Nation roll call as you get on. Let me know who you are and where you're coming at me from. And we'll give you a shout out as we begin the show. Virginia is here, the winner of our comment of the day yesterday for, um, for uh, inciting us not to fire Ted Thompson. It was a very peaceful thing to say, followed by just a few small slaps. Labs, I think was the quote. Uh, let me know who you are. Gabriel is here from Jordan, North Carolina. Virginia is at in El Paso, Texas, holding down the fort in Texas. We've got Packer Nation well represented down there. Chris is here from Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Good to see you, Chris. Good morning. I hope your Tuesday is going well. We're supposed to get rain here. That's okay. Wendy is here, says good morning. Good morning. Sean as well. Good morning there, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to be expecting some news here pretty soon. Uh, Bruno says, go pack, go from Chicago. Scott says, present. Morning there, buddy. Donald is here from Con Concord, North Carolina as well. All right. Yeah, legal tampering, noon Eastern time. We'll see what happens. I don't know how fast Thompson's going to work. Hi there, Brian. Uh, Bruno from Chicago. Jessica is here from Missouri. We got, we're, we're representing Jason now with, out of Minnesota the entire nation, Packer Nation worldwide. Do I have any of my, my Australia or Germany uh, or any of those folks out there? Jump on and let me know where you're coming at me from. As we talk a little more combine, uh, we're going to talk cornerbacks. They're getting out on the field today. Field drills, final closing up the combine. Morning, Mike from California. California is always represented. Um, Happy birthday, Mike. It's Mike says it's his birthday. All right, let's roll up a few hearts for Mike on a Tuesday morning. We can't, we can hardly help ourselves. Happy birthday, man. I hope you have a great one. I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Maybe it's a good way to kick off your day. Maybe it's something that you would rather forget later on, and that's what the birthday party side of the day is for. I don't know. Bryce is here. JB is here. Um, man, Bryce got tornadoes in the area. Um, yeah, I hope everything goes well. Virginia's got a happy birthday for Mike. All right. Um, yeah, the DBs are freaking killing it at the Combine, and the workouts will now close out the Combine uh, today. Everybody's going to head on home. Legal tampering begins for a, a little two-day period at uh, noon Eastern today, so uh, I guess 11 o'clock if you're Central Standard Time. Uh, Joanne is here from Palmer, Texas. We got a couple at least on from Texas. That's good to hear. We got to keep it on these Cowboy fans now. Because we got another showdown this year. They took us once during the regular season. We took them in the playoffs when it mattered. But now we come back to the 2017 season. And it's going to be important. No, it's a rubber match in some regards. But also then it's going to have playoff implications, of course, I would think, down the road. Because you got to expect both of these teams are going to be back in the mix again. All right. Um, we are going to be talking about 40 times a little later with the cornerbacks in particular. Um, we are going to be talking about the big news out of the combine in, a little, in a combine in a little more depth because we touched on it yesterday, but we basically what we were talking about was Packer news. You know, is Julius Peppers coming back? I think everyone agrees at the right price. I don't know that everyone agrees what the right price would be necessarily. Uh, Danny says five stars from Appalachian Hillbilly. And I say, I, I, I come from the north, but I think I say it right. I was corrected early on that it's not Appalachian when you're down here. It's Appalachian. So, Danny, I hope that that, you know, I'm up here in northeast Tennessee. Let me know where you're at there, buddy. Um, talking about 40 times, and guess what? We're going to talk some T.J. Watt today at the end of the show. So, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, good morning. T Candy is here as well. Got to give a shout out to her. All right. Uh, let's see, what is the news? Oh yeah, the big news, here's the deal. All right, now we've got to pull this one, okay? I'm trying to keep myself a little more organized now. We've got to pull this though. I need your opinion. 
The way we poll on Packer Nation is you're going to give, and in this particular instance, you're going to give a thumbs up if you like it, an angry face if you disagree. So it's thumbs up agree, angry face disagree. News comes out, um, and it came out of Yahoo Sports, that um, TJ Lang is going to command about 8 to $10 million a year, guys. All right? Do you agree with this? Is this what we need to do? We need to go for this? Or angry face, is this too much money? We're going to lay that one out right off the bat and let you guys poll. Packer Nation, what do you think? I see a sad face that's kind of got some angry faces, folks. Um, it is getting to be torn. It looks about 50-50 now. The thumbs up are rolling in. We got some people that say, hey, pay the man. Now, do we not, are we not a draft and develop team? Now, when we draft and develop, is not the end result of that supposed to be paying the man? Virginia says, I'm thinking seven, and I am thinking if we can get him at the low end of that, I don't know that we can't, can't, I don't know that we could get him quite that low uh, without him just walking out the door. However, there is the injury in the picture here. So that seven number, or maybe some reorganization with some incentivization, and we'll see how we can do it. And Bryce is making a good point. He added one word to the draft and develop. He said draft, develop, and retain. And that doesn't mean we're going to keep everybody if they don't perform. But listen, one thing we can say about TJ Lang is he has performed. And Donald, I am with you. Keep the offensive line intact. How important is continuity to the offensive line? I mean... There is nothing more important than continuity in the offensive line. However, you weigh in the balance. We've talked about this a lot. Ted Thompson's history of seeming to not really care that much about offensive linemen who are getting up there in years and his success in drafting offensive linemen. It's going to get real interesting really fast. However, I would love to see us shore him up. Maybe, maybe we can get in that six and a half, seven million range somehow. Uh, and not where he, he, he got some offers, but he's willing to take a little bit, a little bit of the edge off of the cap hit for us and uh, be a Packer again. Best O-line we had had in years, without a doubt. You know, it's been a long time and uh, and we're not going to be able to keep both Treader and Lang, I don't think. Uh, and... Uh, so we're not we're not going to be able to keep both of them, and you know guards are now guards are starting to get paid more and more money. Uh, I forget what who it was that got paid like eight point two five million last year. So uh, that number is getting up there, and Lang certainly has a case. And if he wants to go out and get paid more, he probably is going to be able to do it. Uh, Ryan's asking who will franchise tag. I would suspect no one. Um, I just don't think Thompson likes it. Uh, so. Mike says, all right, Mike, I got Mike. 10 million, 10 will guarantee that TT lets him walk. Yeah, and I agree. If, if, he, if he doesn't come below that 10 million mark, I don't see him staying. And, and now the, the, the sort of scary side of that is I think the guy can go out and find a team that's willing to pay him that. Um, and then we're in the situation, and I think Bryce mentioned it earlier. Now, look at the situation. Now we've got to think about spending a, a first-round draft pick, perhaps, on the guy, which pushes our defense back into a hole. So I think getting a deal done where T.J. Lang is, wants to play for a winner and, um, and, and the Packers are willing, though, to pay the guy because, you know, you don't know how many contracts you're going to be able to get. Um, maybe they can work out, you know, kind of stretch the deal out a little bit. If we can get come to some sort of a compromise, I think it's best for the organization. I think it's best for EJ Lang. And throw up a heart if you're for it. If you think that's best for the Packers, if you think it's best for TJ Lang as well. He doesn't have to move. He can stay put. He can play for a winner. I think this is the best situation for everybody. Um... The injury to me is a little bit concerning. Is the guy going to be as available as he we, we need him to be? Um, and Scott's making a fairly good point. Signing an injured player is like buying a used car that's been in an accident. I think it takes away from TJ's leverage. However, you just don't know. There are some desperate teams out there, and you, it's there. Are, you know how many guards? How many really good guards for teams that really need one? Uh, um, 
are out there. So I think if TJ wants to push the issue, I don't think the injury is going to stop him from getting paid. However, I feel like TJ Lang, the, the other thing that concerns me a little bit is what the Packers, what Ted Thompson did to Josh Sitton last year. So is TJ sitting there going, you know, the Packers are not the kind of team that, you know, if anything happens, the Packers will be more than happy to just let me go and they're not going to give me any value down the line. That's the kind of track record that I think Ted Thompson is building at this point. And that's why when I when you look, I'm managing my expectations because I am not sure if they're going to spend the money on TJ Lang at this point, which I think would be a bad thing. I mean, I think we need to spend some money. I don't want to, you know, I, I'm I'm I don't want to spend ten million a year. I mean, come on. Um, so we will see what happens, and I hope you know we get good news early on in the, uh, hopefully early on in the free agency period. That would be nice. Nicholas says, get rid of Ted Thompson. Virginia says, don't get rid of him. Just a few light slaps. But if you want to get rid of Ted Thompson, you can put, you can go ahead and put an angry face up right now. That is totally fine with me. We are here to help Packer Nation express itself, folks. And you can do so. Put that angry face up if you want. Sam is asking, what about Cook? You know, we're, we're going to get to that. Uh, well, actually, I didn't plan to get to that today, but so let's talk about it now because it's a good question. So we've got, all right, listen, I mean, if we have a flurry of free agent signing activity early in the period, this, it's going to be signing our guys is what I think. And I see a lot of, a lot of people wanting to get rid of Ted Thompson right now. Um, yeah, it's the, yeah, like LB is saying, it's the free, it's the legal tampering. You can't sign anybody just yet, not till the night, but today you can talk. You can you can throw you can throw ideas back and forth. Nobody's going to be signed until starting the ninth at like three fifty nine or whatever. I think the this period ends at three fifty nine Eastern, something like that. Um, and I think that what we're going to find about Cook is that there isn't as big a gap as it kind of seems like there was at the beginning. I think the I think the reason here's how negotiations you know. These guys are feeling each other out first. They're, it's just like when you try to sell a car, buy a car. Just like what was mentioned earlier, you know? You throw out, if I put my car up on Craigslist, I've got it up there for $500 more than I think anybody's gonna pay, hoping that I can maybe get $100 more than I thought was what I really should get for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're feeling each other out. It's gonna get serious really quick, but, um, I don't think when all is said and done, because listen, you know, Jared Cook, I think the last thing Jared Cook wants to do, even though, yes, he had a good year, um, but if he puts himself back out there, yeah, maybe he'll make more money, a little bit more money, but he's going to have to start over with a new team, and he's probably going to a team that's a little bit desperate for a tight end, and he may not be in a, on a team that has a chance to win a championship. The thing about Cook was he seemed very happy in Green Bay. Uh, he he focused on football. You know, we had the little the injury snafu. Um, he and Aaron Rodgers seemed to really head it off. And Aaron Rodgers spoke very highly of him. I think that encourages a tight end in the league to have a guy like Aaron Rodgers really speak highly of you. And then both of them showed it on the field. Aaron Rodgers showed that he trusted him, and Jared Cook showed that he was trustworthy. And Donald's saying he wants to be in the playoffs. I completely agree. And that has to play into it for guys. I think Jared Cook, this was what, his ninth year? I think he'd been in the year eight years, or this was his eighth or ninth year. You know, you get to that point, and, and you're, the clock is ticking at this point for Jared Cook. So that has to be uh, sort of factoring into it, okay? Um, all right, guys, I did want to talk a little bit about the big news. We mentioned all the big headlines line of the co combine but we didn't go in very much depth i want to take it from the top all right so we're going to shift gears a little bit from the packers for a minute don't worry we'll get back to the draft the combine and of course we're talking tj watt so that is definitely has packers implications um and you can heart thumbs up anytime you want if you're if you're hopeful that the packers draft tj i got nothing against that we'll talk about it um but i do want to talk uh continue to talk about the combine today because Again, we're seeing it close up right now. Uh, defensive backs out there on, doing their on-field drills, so it'll be interesting. Interesting, um, But I think one thing that needs to be mentioned, you know, we start from the top here. 
And, you know, Miles Garrett went out there and, I mean, he blew the top off of it. He ran a great, uh, he ran a great 40 time. His vertical jump was 41 inches. I mean, crazy stuff. Now, here's the reason I think this matters, because did you catch that, um, and Josh is worried we'll lose, we'll lose Hyde and Cook. Uh, I don't suspect we'd lose both of them, but uh, which one would you want to keep might be a, an interesting question. Um, but listen, uh, Hugh Jackson got up and talked about uh, Trubisky, the quarterback, as if, oh, we're so happy. He came in, he was six foot two. Um, and, uh, you know, we like that in a quarterback, and we're, he's a really great player. And I frankly, I don't know if you caught this, but I, I'm not buying. I am not buying for one minute. Um, I think Jackson was blowing smoke up everybody's butt. Part of the reason, I oh, was sorry to say that. Part of the reason I mentioned this, guys, is my first round draft post, my mock draft will be coming out. I want to do a mock draft after the combine. I think that's when it starts to get real, to be honest. Uh, but I also want to do one before anything happens in free agency because then that changes everything. So I want, that means it's in within the next day or two, I'm going to have to get one out for you. So. I do want to talk about this because I don't for one minute believe that um, Mitch Trubisky is going to be chosen by the Browns as the number one overall pick. I, n not even close. Um, and so I'm kind of telling you, you know, I'm kind of telling you a few of who I think are going to be in my mock. But um, I think that was kind of blowing smoke up everybody's skirt at that point. Uh, I think unless they get a blockbuster deal, Garrett goes to the Browns. I think Trubisky is going to end up maybe with the 49ers, somebody that needs a, uh, a quarterback. Uh, so this, I think for me, the maybe the first five are starting. Yeah, and LB, I'm right with you. I, j I just, but it was interesting to me because I think that it was very calculated that Hugh Jackson got up there and slathered over Trubisky. Oh, he's a fine, fine player. And uh, my goodness, um, you know, he, he came in at the weight, the height we like to see, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so at any rate, that's going to shift things a little bit. Not, not in really anybody's mind. And certainly for the Packers, it doesn't have much impact except as it pushes other players down. So, uh, the other big news, um, you know, another guy that might sort of shake it, shake things up a little bit is a uh, John Ross breaking the 40 yard time. Some teams are going to look at that and let's see where he goes. I heard, uh, mentioned this morning, you know, maybe a mid first round pick for the wide receiver. And that again will be interesting. And I'm hoping there's some shakeup. I'm looking for some shakeup and I want the shakeup to come from offensive players. Um, guys, offensive players that jump up, put push defensive players down to the Packers. And uh, that brings to mind the final news or probably really the biggest news. Oh, well, other than John Ross breaking the record, the 40 time was Ruben Foster getting sent home. Um, this was interesting to me because we were talking and I actually, I was listening to Brian Caravu's uh, Railbird Central podcast. I recommend it really good podcast. And, um, and they were mentioning, he had Lindsay on from, um, great blue North draft. Let me see. I'll look up that name later. Yeah. Um, great blue North draft report. And they were talking about Ruben getting sent home, didn't think that was as big of a deal, really thought that his weight at like 229 might be more of a big deal. And that to me, I don't think would be as big a deal to the Packers as it might be to some other teams. So I'm very interested. And of course, with Alabama's, I think Alabama's pro day is now, is, is coming up this week. Um, oh, Bryce is asking, what do you think about Ross pulling out after beating the record on the 40? Well, I think I would have been 100% for it if he had worn the Adidas stuff and gotten his island. Then he would have had somewhere to go to. Um, I think it, it didn't. I think Deion Sanders did kind of the same thing. He cleared it. It wasn't quite as bla bra brazen as it's been told. But I, you know, if you're if if you're a wide receiver, I think there's other stuff I want to know. Everybody knew the kid was fast. And the fact that he broke the record was basically, in my mind, I think everybody expected to run fourth, around the 4-3. So you're talking to eight hundredths. I think you need to stay. I, I mean, yes, you show that you are very fast, but everybody already knew you were very fast in the first place. So personally, I don't think it was a good idea. Um, and I don't think, I mean, I think, obviously, I think he helped himself by doing this. He really wowed some people. 
But he wowed them with a 40 time. They all know what a 40 time is. Um, and, and, and like you're saying, route, route running, here's how, how did the Packers get away? We have not had a speed receiver forever. And I mean, even since we had Jeff Janis, he's hardly been on the field. We get away. We haven't had, I mean, I'm talking elite speed. Uh, you know, Jordy Nelson's fast, you know. Um, Randall Cobb's fast. But I'm talking, we didn't go after elite 40-time guys. And here's the reason. Because if you can't run routes and you can't get, and you can't handle cornerbacks that play press man, it doesn't matter how fast you run. You're not ever going to get in, you're not ever going to get in a situation your quarterback's going to get sacked to, even if you're running a 4 2 2 40. The only way to use that is, you know, an outside, maybe a, a, a little skinny post or something. You're talking a large drop before you can get that separation. And if you can't deal with press man coverage, it's going to be, it, you're not going to be successful. I don't think are going to be too impressed at all. I was waiting and I, I haven't seen yet. I've waited when been waiting for a lot of people to say that, hey, this guy might be there when the Packers pick. And wanting Ross. I want Ross just to push one more defensive player down to us. And uh, that's my opinion on it. Because, again, you know, especially when the guy didn't stick around, um, there's a lot more to the wide receiver position. We've seen guys. I mean, look at what happened with Jeff Janis. How long did it take Jeff Janis to get reps on the field? It was because of his route running. And not being in the right place at the right time. And yeah, and Jordy, of course, is is really fast guy, but we're talking like a the four three and the sub four three guys, your Chris Johnsons, your Ross. Um, and we don't typically and, and and listen, how about James Jones? I mean, James Jones was big and slow. Uh, but the guy found a way to get open, and then again, it's also yards after catch. We would typically draft bigger guys that could get yards after catch. And uh, that, I think, is more important to the Packers organization than speed. However, I shouldn't. I, if some of you have listened to me, I have said in the recent years um, with Jeff Janis, and, uh, you know, we've been moving toward faster guys. And Trevor Davis, cir Circle Real Small, is mentioning it. Yes, I think we have been paying attention to some speed guys and trying to incorporate that. But, again, we still have to ask ourselves, you know, other than Jordy Nelson, and Jordy Nelson, presumably, if he went out and ran a 40 right now, would he be as fast as he was when his combine time? No way, not even a chance. And it doesn't really matter because he knows how to get open. And his route running is so precise, and he can catch the ball. His hands are so good. Uh, so I think that's what the most important thing is in that regard. And I've got my eye right now on Reuben Foster. And we'll be probably mentioning him again after Alabama's Pro Day. All right. Uh, so the cornerbacks. Let's talk about some cornerbacks. Um, this was amazing. Because we're talking about, a little hitchy there. We're talking about speed. We're talking about fast guys. And I've got to be, I was blown away, to be quite honest. This is a good group. Um, it was Colin Lindsay that I was mentioned, Great Blue North Draft Report, if you want to check that out. He mentioned on Brian Caribou's uh, uh, video, po podcast, Railbird Central, that um, there could be, and I mean, this number blows me away, there could be 20 cornerbacks drafted in the top 100 in this year's draft. So, I mean, it's freaking unbelievable. And I see it's, it's been mentioned, especially, and some of the guys helped themselves at the draft. Uh, Obi Milifonwu is one that we're going to talk about out of UConn. Uh, six foot four, 219 pounds. And let me, I, I, I think it's a 4 4 1. Um, no, it was a 4 4 0 oh that he ran. Now, the 219 pounds at six foot four, but I mean, you, you got to figure the guy has a frame. If they need to add a little weight, he can do that. Um, I've seen him listed as a safety and a cornerback, uh, but again, uh, that's just, that's gargantuan. Uh, <laughs> and he's running a 4-4. Four four. All right, so let me go down the list. I just want, this list just blew my mind, all right? So we got Jalen Myrick, 4-2-8, uh, Fabian Moreau, 4-3-5. Marshawn Lattimore, name you'll recognize, 436. 
Shaquille Griffin, 438. Now at number five, we finally get to 44 even at this point. And Mike's mentioning deepest and best DB class in over a decade, maybe ever. Exactly. Now, li just listen. We've just listed off. We're on name number five. And now we have two more at the 440. 440. And that's Obi Milifonwu and uh, Cordrea Tankersley, of course, which is another name that's been kind of on uh, the Packers uh, radar, Packers fans radar. Marlon Humphrey, 441. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Humphrey was one that the Packers interviewed at the Combine this week. Uh, now, sometimes I think Ted Thompson interviews guys that he's not necessarily interested in, but he wants to find out if he is actually interested in it. Um, so I am not sure about that. But he was interviewed along with T.J. Watt, as far as I understand. Yeah! Uh, Andrew is here saying good morning, good morning there. Um, so now we have two, another another 441 with Josh Jones. Now we finally get to 442 with Adore Jackson, Monte Nicholson 442. Um, and then we finally break to the 443 down to 15 with Conley. It's just, this is just a great group, guys. And I feel like it's appropriate right now. I just feel like it's appropriate to put a heart up on the board if you are happy that this cornerback class is coming out after the Packers 2016 defensive season, guys. Is this turning you on right now? Put a heart on the board if it is making you a very, very happy Packer fan. Um, again, a lot's still going to happen if we bring in a corner in, the, in free agency. Then, of course, that will shake things up a little bit. Um, of course, uh, we talked about Milifanwu a little bit. He is a rising prospect. A lot of guys are going to be... Uh, he raised some eyebrows, and he has been a bit underrated, I think, up to this point. And he will not, he will not go without being noticed at this point. Uh, Jabril Peppers is another one. Um, and he was working out with the uh, defensive backs today. Uh, let's see. I didn't write down. Let's just do this quick um, because I do want to double check uh, Peppers. I think he ran a four four six, something like that. TJ with a four six nine, not bad. Um, but uh, Peppers helped himself. He's going to be working out then. With the, uh, with the DBs this today, uh, as the combine comes to a close, this is another guy. The thing about Peppers, this is the question about Peppers. Is he, is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? And, you know, if you look at the weight of the guy, you're gonna, you're in the NFL, you're gonna wanna say safety. I think he would add a lot to the Packers' defensive backfield because he can do both. We, we experimented with that with Morgan Burnett this year. Um, and uh, we will see what happens and whether he's available. He helped himself out. Who knows um, whether he will get far enough. Um, Daniel says he'll disappoint because he can't cover. I think he can cover it moderately well. I'm not going to say he's a great coverage guy, but I don't, I don't agree that he can't cover. I think he can. Um, and he's not a guy that you're going to – that's why I don't – you know, I think he can cover tight ends. And so that's the difference. If you can play, if you can, you can play a three safety set, you can drop him down in the box. He's excellent against the run, and I think he can cover tight ends, uh, which gives him great value for a Packers team that has yet to find somebody that can cover a tight end. Well, that's not true. I'm overstating that a little bit. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a big proponent of him, um, but we'll see what happens with, uh, I know a lot of people are. Um, so we will see now one guy who was on a lot of people in uh, Packer nations and a lot of Packer nation mock drafts, I believe, uh, came to the combine with questions about his speed was T's Tabor. And, uh, he is, uh, officially, and again, I'm coming out with my first round mock draft here pretty soon. Uh, I have let a few of my ideas slide as to who I think is going to be in number one. And, uh, I forget where the 49ers are slot. But I will also tell you who I don't think will be on my slot at 29 that had been mentioned before by some people. But uh, that's Tabor. He just did not have a good combine workout. We'll see what the pro day brings up. Uh, but we can, we will see from that from there on. It's going to be interesting, guys. 
Uh, wow. But what a day for, what a way to close this combine. I mean, you look at the speed. It was a freaking track meet out there um, when they ran the 40, and now they get to close out. Now, here's, I think, and I think today is the day where the GMs, the head coaches are going to really see what they want to see. Hey there, Tim. Um, and that is, you know, what kind of hip flexibility do they have? How, what, how are their ball skills? Um, how well do they catch the ball? How well do they track it? And uh, uh, that's what today is all about. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, very, very interesting uh, way to close the, com the uh, combine. So, all right. Uh, across the board, a deep class says uh, Cody. Pepper should play running back or wide receiver. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Um. All right, folks. Well, you guys can roll up your thoughts on the combine as we close it out. Uh, best looking draft in a long time. Yeah, and there was one thing I think yesterday, and I was realizing I never went back and checked it out. I think I may have mentioned that the offensive line was really strong in this draft. The offensive line as a whole I don't think is really strong. I think there's a couple tackles that are going to go in the first round that will help the, the Packers again maybe pick up a good defensive player I think is what I meant by that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see anybody correct that, or but I don't really think this is a, a really great offensive line in general, center guards and tackles. Uh, but I do think there are a couple guys that teams with needs are gonna have to grab uh, in the first round, and you'll see that when my mock comes out. Uh, but again, every offensive player to me right now that pushes a defensive player down toward twenty nine is a good thing for me. All right. Uh, Jeff Hayes. Oh, Jeff, you just won it. Jeff Hayes just won it. It's comment of the day. Jeff Hayes wins. Um, and we've got, he said, uh, legal tampering begins today. But, uh, Ted Thompson is golfing. All right. That's the comment of the day, folks. We got it. Um, hey, good to see you, Jeff, by the way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe there, you know, there was word that there's a lot of talk going on. But talk doesn't mean that this is what I want. Here's what matters to me. Give me a thumbs up. If, if you, and I'm going to say this to Ted. Okay. Ted, the rumors don't matter to me. Pen, pen. This is a pen. This is paper. Pen to paper is what matters to me, all right? <laughs> Pen to paper is what matters. Ink the deals, my friend. We need to ink some deals right now. Aaron Rodgers will not be a year younger next year. Peter? Aaron Rodgers will not be a year younger next year. He will be a year older, okay? This is how time works, Ted. Um, Tyron, who would you like to see us get? I don't know if you're asking in the first round of the draft in free agency or what. Um, Cody says, preach, Brady. All right. Yeah, because I know that's what you... And and frankly, this is... I mean, I have not been a fire Ted Thompson guy, but I am a get a deal done kind of guy. Um, you need to. You know, I know. And there, and I've, I've had this concern that uh, no one... Oh, uh, Peppers pulled out a sit. Yeah, uh, the hammy. Do, I mean, I guess if you're concerned because of Clay Matthews, the injury situation doesn't bother me as much. Um, I don't. I don't think. I don't have much. I'm not really excited about Peppers, regardless. Um, but uh, you know, and, and you know, Sporting News projected him as a good fit. Um, and you know, but of course, people are going to go back and forth on that. At any rate, I am not a big fire temp Ted Thompson guy. But what I t I'll tell you, I am is uh, I do believe that there is the notion out in the league, and I think it starts with the Packers draft and develop uh, system, and the fact that they and you know, you look at some of the track record that's out there. We had Randall Cobb that came back, and I think the Packers sometimes expect players to come back for less than they can get elsewhere, and that. At some point, can it can help us if they come back and they take less? That helps us. If they leave, it hurts us. So again, uh, we find ourselves with Thompson on the horns of a dilemma. And Stephen is mentioning might probably get a thumbs up or two for that comment to uh, promote Elliot Wolf. So, and of course we got Gutkunst in there as well. 
who has interviewed for GM jobs elsewhere. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how the Packers move forward when Thompson's contract is up. But that, again, is not going to happen this year. Uh, let's see here. I wish I could still thumbs up your comments. I just can't do it right here. Um, all right, Jeff is making a comment. One solid corner signing is all they need. Draft and develop the rest of the needs. Yeah, and I mean, for crying out loud, we can, we can, if we sign a corner, we can still end up getting a good one in the draft. I mean, it's, there are enough of them there. Um, there's one last thing as we close for today that I want to talk about. And it's just a simple question because we're talking about Ted Thompson. So uh, I don't know how to do this. I want to pull everybody. And I think I'm going to do thumbs up for up, uh, heart for trade down. Do you want in the first round, are you thinking trade up? Let's trade up. Ted Thompson, trade up. If you had your dream draft, would you be trading up, thumbs up, or would you be trading down to stockpile picks? Put the heart up on the screen for that one. Which one do you like? I see a trade up. I see a down. I'm not sure where this one's going to go. A lot of trade ups. Andrew's got a Packers Raiders Super Bowl 52, and he's standing by it. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. We talked about that a couple days ago, yeah, when you mentioned I think for Phil says he'll never trade up. He he has done it in the past. Uh, but yeah, I tend to agree. And I in this draft, it's looking a bit. There's a lot of people wanting to trade up, but I'm seeing the uh, trade downs. And again, Stan Pat, I, I'm not taking a, I, we're, we're assuming Stan Pat and we're saying, hey, which would you prefer us to go if we went one way or the other? Okay. And Daniel is saying, this is what I would say too. And I'm agreeing with you, Daniel. I think it's such a deep draft that spending, that spending capital to trade up I don't think that I don't think the player unless there's a player that Thompson just really thinks is going to be an absolute stud. Um, but there are so many, especially at the cornerback position, that can be very very good in this league. I think trading down, it, you know, again we're taking Stan Pat off the table right now. I would like to see a, a Ted Thompson trade down. And and because I think he's going to get some really, really good players. And then you just sort of you're hedging your bet numbers wise in hopes that you get uh, one real true stud out of that group. Uh, so that's where I stand on that, guys. Um, uh, well, and hopefully with legal tampering beginning, we will be hearing about some uh, some signing soon. Again, pen and paper, Ted, pen to paper. We need it. Uh, we've got a lot of concerns in terms of our own free agents that could walk at this point. Um, so very, very interesting offseason for the Packers. Could be an extremely exciting one. I think the draft is laying out very well for us. I'm really not sure about uh, how free agency is going to play out for us. And again, I've, I've had this sort of notion that uh, you know Ted Thompson knows the numbers, and part of the reason that Sam Shields left, initially I was thinking is he, he wanted to have money to replace him. Now, however, I'm thinking Ted Thompson was stockpiling that money because he knows how many free agents we're going to have to sign, and he has an idea of how much it's going to cost. If you're starting with TJ Lang in that eight to ten million a year, that's going to hurt right off the bat. Now you got Jared Cook. That's not even starting to add Nick Perry to that situation, which is going to be very, very big. And a lot of people then also we got it. We you know Micah Hyde is the poster child of draft and develop. So this is going to be an interesting offseason. And the closer we get, uh, the really the more concern I have. When I look to the draft, I have less concern. When I look to free agency, I've got some concern. So we will see. Uh, oftentimes it takes Ted Thompson a long time to get these things done. Jared Cook last year, it took all the way up to, like, what, training camp or whatever. Hopefully they can get it done faster. We don't want to sit on our hands with Jared Cook and especially Nick Perry, uh, TJ Lang. Um, uh, and and so, uh, guys, uh, a couple of announcements. We are going to be doing a new total tailgating show. We're trying to smooth out your off season. We're doing everything we can. And I got a feeling most of you out there like to eat, and probably a lot of you out there like to cook and like to tailgate. So uh, we're going to be doing a tail t t t a show called Total Tailgating, totally tongue tied. Um, 
and hopefully it will be the positive TT in Packer Nation. Uh, but I'll give you more information on that. We're going to be doing some fun stuff with that uh, stuff. You know, it's it's just going to be a blast. I think we'll probably just go live with it just to to have the uh, fun and the foibles and the chat back and forth. Tyron is a chef. Great. So I would love it if you would jump in and comment. Of course, um, you know, I've done a lot. I've done uh, I've managed restaurants. I've worked in them from a very young age, but I don't have any of the formal education. I just try to do what I can and uh, we have a lot of fun. Um, so hopefully, and maybe we'll pick up some tips from you. Hopefully you can pick up some from me. I think the greatest thing about cooking is we can all learn from one another and have fun and then we get to eat. So, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm interested in that. If you haven't got on our fire fan league yet, we're going to be playing March Madness. Um, I put a new button on the, on the Facebook fan page. It says, get the app. All you have to do is click that button. It'll take you to the website. You fill out your information. It already has the promo code in it. And then you just go to fire, go to your app store and download it. And our, if you're a Badger fan, you, if you're a Packer fan, which you are, if you're on this show, most likely, Packer Nation is our league. If you're a Badger fan, if you happen to be a Badger fan as well, we are playing March Madness um, with Badger Nation. You have to look for my brother's name, J.R. Augustine, and um, and jump in with us that. If you're not a Badger fan, start your own league. Every player can start their own league, and now you can play for free. All you have to do is interact with ads. They've got a whole bunch of promotions going, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So, all right. John is here. Good to see you, buddy. Um... Joshua says one word, and I, I'm kind of waiting to see what it is. Maybe there's <laughs> something there. All right, going to do the Big Ten tournament. Uh, we probably are, Daniel. Um, what if if you haven't if you've downloaded already? Just look for the Badger Nation, and and uh, we will probably play because I think that starts tonight against Northwestern, if I remember right. Um, so. Uh, We'll see. Uh, Tom is asking if I can get Eddie Lacey as a guest chef on Total Tailgating. Um, I think, you know, depending on what his contract situation is, um, hopefully that's a very real possibility. So, um, actually, I would love to have him on, I, although everyone would be so tongue-in-cheek about it, including myself, that, um, yeah, he would never, never do that. But... Um, but hopefully we'll have a lot of fun. We're going to be doing, actually, we're going to kind of range far and wide because uh, we're going to go across the creek to my little campsite, guys. I just got done uh, cleaning that up, um, getting it ready. We're going to be doing some cooking over open fire. We may do some dirty steaks. We're going to do some just different stuff. We're going to range far and wide and just have a lot of fun because it all comes down to, uh, you know, principles, cooking principles and nice skills and all these kinds of things that are a whole lot of fun to learn. So, all right. Uh, John, yeah, his Pepper's coming back, but Ted Thompson has to do something else. Yeah, I agree. If they can get, they might be able to get Peppers back for a decent deal, but we need more than Julius Peppers on this team. Number one, I think we need Clay Matthews healthy and, and Nick Perry back. This was our, this was the real tandem. And again, Julius Peppers, if you look at his sack total, I think it was seven and a half sacks. It's really nothing to sneeze at. Um, but uh, just not what we were hoping to get in terms of impact plays down the stretch, I think is the biggest um, problem that we've had. So, um, at any rate, uh, that will do it for today, guys. Um, I am looking forward to talking to you five days a week, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I guess I'll be off for now, but, um, but I'm going to get on here, get to work on my mock draft. I hope you'll enjoy that. That will be at greenbaypackernation.com. Of course, our Facebook fan page will be a clearinghouse for just about everything we do. If you're interested in the total tailgating party, we'll probably make an announcement about that live show then, which actually goes to a different page, uh, NFL Tailgate Party. Uh, but we're going to try to keep you informed out of the GPN Facebook fan page. So we hope that that helps you um, sort of smooth out the offseason, days that you have to wait. Uh, but a lot of good stuff coming. Hopefully, if Ted gets a few of our, our guys signed, we'll have some exciting news to talk about in the future. And in the meantime, I want to thank all of you guys for watching. I appreciate it so much. All your comments are unbelievable. Um, Christian says there's free pancake. It's free pancake day at IHOP. I mean, that's it, freaking awesome. Uh, go get you some. 
Um, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. If you're watching on YouTube, and we'd love it if you'd like and subscribe this video. We'll talk to you guys later. Later, JB, Virginia. Good to see you, Cody. Talk to you later. We'll see you again tomorrow. Same pack time, same pack place. Go pack. Pack a nation worldwide.